here with Luna J. I'm Brian. I'm Tyler. And uh, this is our, our pilot episode. Yes, this is the first of maybe more to come. Probably would call me the pilot. Probably more. Tough it depends producers. on if you like it. Depends on if you like it. Tough producers. Yeah. Anyway, let's go on to what we're doing here. We got some questions and hopefully some answers. Um, yeah, hopefully. It's been pretty cool because we've you know, been playing a little bit and have been amassing questions. Oh, by the way, oh. did you uh, mention what your whiskey was? Oh, Station Break. Oh, Station Break, Station Break. Paul's from this whiskey identification. This was, uh, I'm drinking a Monkey Shoulder. Very, very nice. I'm drinking Total More Dew, just a classic flagship, green label. It's fantastic. I could talk more about it, but this is not about that. This is about us. We hope you enjoy the rest of this presentation. We are very, very humble people. <laughs> there we go. So over the years, mostly the last one in particular, you know, people have been asking us some questions, some fun questions here and there, and we just kind of put together some of our favorites, and we thought we would share a few of those with you tonight. Um, one of the first ones I have here is from Beth. She's from Pennsylvania, and she asks, what's the reasoning behind the start and finish of your album, Phases? All right. Well, the uh, Phases... Um, that was actually my idea because I wanted to give uh, a good um, send off to my dad. My dad passed away about a year before we started recording this and uh, released it. So it's one of those things where um, he was a musician and, and we played music together. And he was one of my one of my first big fans and big influences. So um, at the beginning of the album. There's like a guy getting in a truck and stuff like that. My dad would do that every morning. And, um, turn on the radio, and um, I decided to make that a song called "The Road" that my dad and I wrote together. And we—that's the only song that we recorded together. And so I decided to do that to start the album, and then it goes into "Fool's Gold" and on and on and on. And um, the, the album was kind of a road tripping album. We kind of decided that. Kind of one point. Yeah, listen to it while you're taking a little trek on the road. It, it's, it's hard to get boring because it's got a lot of different flavors to it. Um, anyway, so then the middle of the album, Breathe, um, is a song that I wrote for my dad with some of his lyrics. Um, I started with like a little bit of his lyrics and then wrote my own song based off of that. And then, um, so listen to that and try to understand that a little better. And then uh, the last song, Hard and Heart, ends with a guy getting like getting done with his road trip or whatever, and turning off his radio, just flipping through his radio, get to another station or whatever. And um, it's another one of my dad's songs that's there. And then there's, it ends with the song that I took the lyrics from to write, breathe. And it ends with my dad's voice at the end. So it's, I thought it was a pretty good tribute. Full circle there. Full circle. Yep. For sure. That's it for our second question. I have Jason from San Francisco. He asks, when can we expect you guys out to the West Coast? And that is a very good question. I mean, honestly, I wish we could just leave at the drop of the hot hat. I've been trying to get to the Pacific for drop it like it's hot. Way, it like it's hot. way too long. But you know, we've made as far west out as Denver. We just haven't quite made the push over the Constance of Divide out to the coast. Um, hopefully, there's not I know they're tough. So tough. There's a few 14ers in there. We tried to find a different route. It seemed like the best route. In the end, it wasn't. But we're hoping, seriously hoping, as soon as we can. Next year would be great. We don't know what that'll, if that'll happen or how that will happen. But to be honest, so that's why we're here. We're making more of these videos. We're going to try to really amp up our online content just to keep pushing any way we can to get to other places. We sure. can't be there physically. We can be here with smiles on our face seeing you this way until we get to see you then. I hope that answers that for you. As I said, I hope to give you high fives <laughs> in the next 12 months. All right. Well, I got one from a little closer from Kansas City. Jeff. Yeah. He asks, if you could time travel to any music scene in the last 100 years, where would you take Luna J? I would take Luna J to the late 60s, early 70s. Late 60s, early 70s. That's nice. like golden age of music, man. I'm going to ask, what what part of the country? You got, you got a scene, you got a city, you got a place, you got a good title. California. Cali. Jason, if you were alive, you know, 40, 50 years ago, maybe it just would have worked out, worked Vegas. itself out. Vegas, yeah. 
No, no, Jason and I asked when we were coming to the West Coast. You were saying, oh, call back. Ah. they call it a callback. Yeah, I yeah. like that. You know, yeah, good call. Paying attention here. <laughs> I wasn't, obviously. <laughs> That's all right, though. So, me personally, instead of giving it some thought, you know, Count Basie era, 1920s DC. I don't know if he was in DC. I just hope he was. In my head, I just see big band stands, big sounds, a little bit of clarinet. Maybe like some really rogue type of minory chords, really nice themes, prohibition, flapper dresses, rum running. I see it all. It probably doesn't go together. I love history. I think I just jumbled together a lot of different aspects, but it's okay because I believe in it. We would have a good cutting edge sound that way. I think so. You know, it's like people would be like, What's this electric guitar? <laughs> They're gonna hook the phone like on uh, Back to the Future. Like, you hear this, Chuck? They're gonna be saying that, and we're gonna create. Not that. I lost the thread here. I don't know what music we create <laughs> with that not having guitars, but I digress. Anyway, we digress a long time ago. <laughs> back on track here. Last <laughs> question. We went from the backyard to in the house. We have a question from Springfield. Ooh, Springfield. Springfield. Yeah. Whitney, she asked, if the members of Luna J were the Spice Girls, who would they be? Wow. Probably the most serious question you've been asking. I'm going to be honest, I don't even know all the Spice Girls. <sighs> you can take a long second. Wait, there's, sure. what is it? Baby, Posh, Ginger, Ginger, and scary, Sporty. And Scary. And scary. There's five? I thought there's five. Four. I think there's five. I thought all like iconic bands were the four now, not boy bands and stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's start with the rhythm section because they're not here to juice. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. I would say, I would see Tom. Ginger. Bean, He's got a ginger beard. Oh, you're just. Like, I mean, yeah. come on, man. Like, can't, can't make it that easy. They're posh vibes just because he's just got that style. And I mean, not a posh style, but that style. I was gonna say nonetheless, I'm thinking like Peaky Blinders. Anybody's Blind, posh. Be you, Peaky Blinders. <laughs> That's English. That's a good reference. So we'll say posh slash ginger. <laughs> Nick, our bass player right now, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with Sporty Spice. Sporty? I'm going to go with Sporty Spice. Because I feel like Sporty Spice is really sporty. That's how she got her name. <laughs> and Nick really likes to do the hockey and the sports. Oh, I would go with uh, Baby Spice. A mix? We're doing mixes here? Because he's small. Oh! Oh! oh. Nick's going to get me on that one. Yeah, later. He deserves you. Yeah, probably. All right. <laughs> Okay, I'm putting myself here. Okay, What's so the... now we, we got each of us kind of came up with our own for those two. So I, yeah. I did Ginger and Baby. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think I'd be a mix of Scary and Ginger Spice. Scary because like I never really understood how she picks Scary as her spice. She just had big hair. <laughs> and I think you know what I think like if she just have big hair, I'm gonna have big clothes, just really loud, big yeah, hat, big hat, big hat. Yeah. And Ginger's just. Well, it is about Ginger, but I always remember her. Oh, we, know, we know which one Tyler had a crush on. Ginger Spice for sure. All right. <laughs> well, I ain't ashamed of it. I ain't ashamed to say it. I watch Spice World. I, I don't even. I don't even know what I'd be. I, mm -hmm. I've been coming up with bullshit because I don't even know what the what they all. Uh, really, the only like thing I know about them is Spice World, and I can see like certain scenes. I okay, remember what, them in the house. What about like, me, man? Spice World, man. I'm gonna give you baby spice. For sure. Because baby and sporty. <laughs> baby, baby and sporty. Oh wait, that's Nick. He can't be the same thing. You'd be baby and posh. I'll just call you baby posh spice. Baby posh spice. Baby, baby posh. posh. What up, baby posh? Baby posh. Alright. Well, <laughs> and you know what? That's like all we're gonna go through today. It's yeah. been really fun. It's a great question. Well, a lot of fun actually. Uh we've we've had a lot of fun. I hope you guys have too. So yeah, we're going to end this one right here, and we hope to check you out on our next episode of Words and Whiskey with Luna J. Words and Whiskey? Cheers. Cheers. Out to you guys. Peace. Bye. <laughs>